It's been a great privilege and honor to be the president of the American University of Nigeria, a far newer university than Dickinson College. Founded by a man who was orphaned in our city at a very young age, his belief was that higher education is not just for private gain, but for the public good. So it's been an honor to be a part of a university that has come together with a community at a critically important time in Nigeria's history to live that mission. And I hope to do that at Dickinson. Dickinson is known for its programs in global education, in sustainability, its interdisciplinary teaching and research. Its mosaic programs are extraordinary. The world needs to know about them. I think we're at a time where American universities and colleges must go back and look at what the land-grant universities did in an earlier part of our history. And their mission was to take the knowledge from agriculture at that time into the community. I think the challenge is much greater now as the civic fabric of our country is a bit frayed. I think American colleges and universities must be at the forefront of civic engagement and community engagement. I've been reading a lot of your literature of where your graduates go and it's so impressive to see the graduate schools, the internships, the jobs they are ready to take on. I hope very soon there's a new column in those publications that talks about community engagement, that talks about the problems that students and faculty have solved in Carlisle, in the wider community, in the region, in the country, and in the world. At first, when you're a new leader, you listen. You listen to concerns, you listen to multiple perspectives. So I hope to do that very quickly, on campus and off campus. Well, I hope some of the faculty will invite me into their classes for guest lectures. I've been teaching most of my career because if you don't teach, you don't really understand students' perspectives. I'm an avid athlete, so I think I will see students, hopefully, in the squash court, in the swimming pool, jogging around campus, and just interacting in informal ways. I'm really eager to get out and meet the amazing alums of Dickinson College. I've been reading about them. They're in government, they're in business, they're in the nonprofit sector, they're, art, they're doing extraordinary things. And I can't wait to get out and begin meeting some of them. I'm excited about taking a college that everyone calls the hidden jewel and making it less hidden and making sure that students and parents and alums and others in the country and the world understand what Dickinson stands for. I'm excited about hopefully doing some new programs that build on that history and heritage. Well, Dickinson is at the forefront of so many of the things that I believe in and I think what our country needs at this point. You've been a leader for so many years in global education. Your programs in sustainability are leading the way in the country. And the interdisciplinary work your students and faculty are doing is very hard to do and you've been doing it for a long time. Um, on top of that, your history and your heritage is unique in American history and in American higher education. And when you look back to, at some of the things Benjamin Rush said about democracy, his anti-slavery position, his position on women, he stood up at a time in America when it wasn't fashionable to do that. And I think now in American higher education and American history, Dickinson can lead the way on some issues that are really important to all of us. I think the most important thing that I've been involved in as an individual and as a university president at AUN was a community and university-led effort to take care of hundreds of thousands of internally displaced people who fled the violence and terrorism of Boko Haram. They came, these 400,000 refugees, or IDPs as we call them, came to our city and we began learning through our employees what they were doing. One of our drivers was taking care of 50 people on his own. And to see a community, a university, and a very diverse community, a Muslim, a Christian, a community with women's groups, um, rich and poor, educated and barely educated, came together for three years and fed almost 300,000 people and read the, raised the money for that and develop programs for young people who had no hope and little education, peace through sports. 
that kept every young person in our community from joining Boko Haram. I've learned the power of community. I've learned what happens when people from diverse backgrounds and diverse perspectives come together to solve problems. Anything can happen. So I'm very proud of that university community effort. We live in one of the most interconnected, globalized periods in human history. To be successful at this point in time in the world, you have to be able to appreciate and understand multiple perspectives, different languages, different worldviews, because we don't do anything alone. We solve problems, we make progress in the world working on teams. Those teams are international, those teams are multicultural. The skills and knowledge that Dickinson College graduates and students gain are essential for their success and for our country's success and for the world's success. So Dickinson has a tremendous reputation in doing this. I think there are new places they can go. Hopefully I can open up some new um, sites in Africa for students who will want to go there. But um, what Dickinson College has been doing, what you have been doing, what we will do in the future is extraordinarily important. Well, one of the greatest problems we face as humankind, not just as Americans, is what we have done to our climate. The evidence is extremely clear on this. And it's a problem for our generation. It's a problem we will leave for future generations if we don't move quickly to solve it. We need to get over the point of thinking of sustainability as something that's contrary to economic and social and political progress. It has to be woven in to all of those things that are important to us. We do sustainability initiatives at AUN also. We have 800 women and men picking up the plastic trash from the streets because there is no trash collection and weaving it into the most beautiful products you can imagine. So that's an example of sustainability too. We're building sustainable incomes based on the trash in the city, waste to wealth it's called. So we need to do even more in this area. We need to make sure that not just students are educated on these important topics, but those um, in our community and the rest of the country. So I think the most important thing I've accomplished in my life is having a wonderful daughter who I'm so proud of, who's just beginning a PhD. Um, and it's a joy to raise her and to have come from a family, a large family. I'm the youngest of five children um, and was privileged to see much of the world as a young child with two parents who were airline pioneers. And I know that's shaped me so much into the person that I am. And I'm just grateful for my family and for my daughter. I'm just honored to have been chosen as Dickinson College's 29th president. I learned a long time ago that we don't do anything alone. We do things in teams, we do things as a community. So first I look forward to meeting the community and hearing from them, students and faculty and staff, and together forging a vision for where Dickinson College will head in the early part of the century that responds to all of the challenges that we face now in America and the rest of the world.